melody of that march is appropriately called Happy Song. It's joyously sung by Salvationists around the world with the words, we are marching onward, singing as we go. In the early days of the army, a bishop saw a group of Salvationists singing as they marched down Oxford Street in London. He said, these people will sing their way around the world. This prediction has certainly been fulfilled. And here's another Salvationist who loves to sing. So great salvation has won my heart From the Creator it had its start First he made man to live a life complete He then the choice did give his will to me that sad moment when man did fail God in his mercy still does prevail for our redemption a plan he gave so great salvation ambition he did impart a new desire to live his will not mine his righteousness he gives he is divine now all around I see sin's poverty God in his mercy can make us free for our redemption a plan he gave so great salvation In one of his less cynical moments, George Bernard Shaw once said, I've never written a hymn, nor in the name of creation do I ever expect to, but should this most improbable thing ever come to pass, my model would have to be the perfect hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. 
Sir Edward Elgar, the great English composer, also had high praise for this majestic old hymn. In both words and music, he wrote, this is the most magnificent gift to English hymnody. And I think most people would agree with the sentiments of both of these eminent gentlemen. There are certain hymns which never wear thin or lose their soul-stirring challenge, and All Hail the Power is just such a hymn. Yet for a hundred years and more, this noble piece of hymn writing presented a baffling puzzle. Nobody knew for sure who had written it. The verses had first appeared in the year 1785 in a small book entitled Occasional Verses, but the book had been privately published in a very limited edition, and oddly enough, without any author's name attached. Therefore, when the poem entitled All Hail the Power was lifted from the book and set to music, the space for the author's name was left blank. But as the new hymn became increasingly popular and was added to the newer hymn books, various claims to authorship were made. In one early hymn book published around 1788, the writer of the hymn was mysteriously identified by the initials T.B., while in another edition somebody called Duncan had been given the credit. Then, when All Hail the Power was brought to America in 1793, the verses were accredited to a certain obscure Samuel Medley. However, by this time, a small group of people in Canterbury, England, had brought forth a new name. They contended that Occasional Verses, the book of poems from which All Hail the Power had been taken, had been written by Edward Perronet, a local preacher. But Perronet himself was in no position to support the claim. He had died a year or so earlier and had been duly interred in the cloister of Canterbury Cathedral. And so on through the years, the problem remained unresolved. It was not until the early 1920s that an American hymn historian made a rather remarkable discovery and finally established the hymn's true author. This gentleman had been minutely studying one of the few remaining original copies of Occasional Verses, the book that had lacked the author's name, and on page 39 there was a poem called Sleep, whose opening lines read, Emblem of death as is its couch the grave, doomed to contain the coward and the brave, where sleep reclined the guilty and the pure alike entombed, sequestered and secure. As he read and reread the poem, the historian suddenly saw what nobody else in over a hundred years had noticed, namely that the initials of the lines formed a sort of acrostic puzzle. Here, let me show you. E D W A R D Edward P E R R O N E T Edward Peronet. So there at last, the secret was out. Rural preacher Edward Peronet had indeed written occasional verses and had chosen his own odd way of identifying himself. Why he did so and why he never once came forward to claim all hail the power as his own, well, at this long distance, that's anybody's guess. But I think you can see what I mean when I say there's a wealth of romance behind many of our great old hymns, yes, and sometimes mysteries and puzzles, too. A gentleman attending the Baptist World Alliance held in Rio de Janeiro in 1960 tells of the great inspiration received when, at a mass meeting held in the huge Maracana Stadium, almost a quarter of a million people joined voices to sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. The credit recorded on the hymn sheets, Edward Perronet, born 1726, died 1792. This is just one more instance of an obscure but faithful person unknowingly making a tremendous contribution to millions of people. A rural preacher who penned occasional verses of poetry reaches the whole world and countless generations with the good influence of a devoted mind. We can't always be living at our best but it's a worthwhile objective seeing that the moment of our greatest impact on those around us can never be known. Here are some of the verses of Edward Perronet's great hymn. Crown him, crown him, crown him. 
kindred, every tribe, all nations great and small. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. For that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may The joy of pouring out praise to God and the singing of hymns is a very real and good thing. But we must remember that praise to God is much more than singing. The prophet Micah spoke about offerings of sacrifice and praise. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The prophet goes on to explain that God cannot accept praise from the person who mistreats his fellows, Praise from the man that, as the words of the Bible put it, uses wicked balances, a bag of deceitful weights, is full of violence, or whose tongue is deceitful, is of no value. Only the man who is square with himself and with his fellow man is in a position to offer praise to God. This is why repentance is so important a part of coming to God. His forgiveness for our wrongdoing and our determination to do his will with his help opens the way to rewarding worship. Jesus said, Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Join us again when we will seek to learn more of the living word and of him who is in very truth, the living word. bestseller. This free Bible correspondence course is yours just for the asking. Simply send a letter or postcard to The Living Word, care of this station. Do it today. Do it now.